Hello friends, welcome to another video of Hybrid Academy. So today we are going to discuss about the latest launch from Indian government that is e-rupee. You can also call it a digital rupee or a digital currency by CBDC which is Central Bank Digital Currency. Let's first know about the inception of e-rupee. In 2016, Indian government launched Bheem, or UPI, and close to zero transactions were done in the first three months due to very little adoption of the technology. But over the next three years, the technology found massive adoption and today in 2022, approximately 500 crore or 5000 million transactions are done every month with almost 350 plus banks who are supporting this. Gradually, UPI was so successful that many countries like UK, France, Nepal, Bhutan, Oman, Malaysia, etc. have started to adopt UPI. UPI offered massive benefits to both the end users, money sender as well as money receiver. Due to UPI, no one has to carry cash now and money can easily be transferred from one bank account to another instantly. UPI was so popular because it offered a lot of benefits. Some of them are listed below. UPI enables a real-time money transfer via mobile devices 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. It gives access to multiple bank accounts through a single mobile application. It offers single-click two-factor authentication while also offering single-click payment. The customer's virtual address offers incremental security because the customer is not required to enter details such as card number, account number, IFSC code, etc. This application allows you to share bills with your friends. It is highly useful alternative to hassles of cash on delivering or running to an ATM without money for making payments. UPI can be used to pay utility bills, make online payments and make barcode or scan and pay payments etc. So, looking at the success of the first project of UPI, Indian government decided to launch its own CBDC which is Central Bank Digital Currency also called Digital Rupee or E-Rupee on December 1st, 2022. Now let's try to understand what are the different formats of money. Majorly, money can either be physical or digital. Now this physical money is only in the format of cash this cash with you can be white money or it can be black money. Going to digital format, any money which is kept in your bank account is considered as a digital money. Apart from this, the digital currency that is CBDC is also digital money. Any other money representation format which is either your check or your savings or your fixed deposits or your recurring deposits. All these formats are also the representation of digital money. Anything which you don't have physical paper currency in hand can be considered as a digital money. All the money kept in bank accounts, wallets, for example, Paytm, Amazon Pay, Phone Pay, etc. is actually a digital money kept in the books and is not the hard cash until you withdraw it physically from the ATM. UPI is not a money format. It's the money enabler which enables the transfer of digital money from one bank account to another. Do you know 92% of the world's currency is digital? This means that most of the money you earn, exchange or use to buy goods and services exist only on computers and hard drives. And only an estimated 8% of global currency is physical money, that is hard cash. This information is based on one of the articles published in Times of India. Now let's discuss some facts about money flow. All the government and private banks maintain their ledgers at the branch level and at the complete bank level. All these ledgers are collectively shared with Reserve Bank of India which maintains a master ledger based on all the inputs provided. Now the most important point is that if you withdraw some amount, let's say Indian rupees 1000 from a bank account and keep it under your custody. RBI will not be able to track what are you doing with that money. This was the main thing which Modi ji highlighted and tried to resolve. The value and volume of bank currency notes in circulation are increasing day by day and year by year. 
bringing the cash economy back with the bank. This serves the main point for bringing CBDC, that is Central Bank Digital Currency, into existence. Now, after so much discussion, let's come up to the biggest question of this video: What is CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency? The Indian version of CBDC is not a new currency, but an electronic version of the sovereign currency, that is the rupee. This new format is referred to as e-rupee or digital rupee. The e-rupee will provide an additional option to the currently available forms of money. It is substantially not different from banknotes, but being digital, it is likely to be easier, faster, and cheaper from the government's perspective. It also has the transactional benefits of other forms of digital money. Reserve Bank broadly defines CBDC as a legal tender issued by the central bank in a digital form. It is akin to sovereign paper currency, but takes a different form, exchangeable at par with existing currency, and shall be accepted as a medium of payment, legal tender, and a safe store of value. CBDCs would appear as liability on central bank's balance sheet. Now let's know about the tracking of money flow. So as defined earlier, CBDCs would appear as liability on central bank's balance sheet. This means all the transactions related to digital currency would directly be tracked and maintained by the central bank and in coordination with the Reserve Bank of India. This complete process will be done via blockchain. Now what is blockchain? Blockchain in layman's language is a network that allows you to push data or transfer data from point A to point B. Now in context of money, blockchain is a technology that can enable you to develop networks that allow you to push transactions and information related to transactions from point A to point B. Now we have learned a lot about UPI and CBDC, so let's compare UPI versus CBDC. E-Rupee is in fact a currency in digital form, whereas UPI is a platform that facilitates banking transactions. The CBDC will not have an intermediator. The CBDC or E-Rupee is a legal tender money backed by RBI like cash, but for UPI payments, it must be linked with the bank accounts. CBDC is not expected to replace India's premier instant payment solution that is UPI. Instead, it is touted to replace physical cash, which is untrackable. CBDCs can serve as digital banknotes in future digital economies. Going further, let's know what were the motivations behind CBDC that brought it into existence. The key motivations for exploring the issuance of CBDC in India, among other, include reduction in operational cost involved in physical cash management. fostering financial inclusion bringing resilience efficiency and innovation in payment system adding efficiency to the settlement system boosting innovation in cross border payments and providing public with uses that any private virtual currency can provide without the associated risk the use of offline feature in cbdc would also be beneficial in remote locations and offer availability and resilience benefits when electrical power or mobile network is not available moving further let's understand the operating methodology of cbdc cbdc works on a specific code shared via qr code or sms and the payment done via cbdc is predefined and can only be used for the given specific purpose For example, earlier with various government schemes, the actual amount reaching the beneficiaries was half stolen or manipulated by the mediatory parties or establishments. However, with the introduction of digital currency, this would not be possible as the specific code can be given and utilized by the person it is intended for. Let's see another example where let's assume that the government launches a scheme of giving a benefit to each farmer with seeds or fertilizers of indian rupees 1000 earlier to do this government would either provide them with the actual goods or will transfer indian rupees 1000 to each of the farmers bank account but this does not guarantee that the farmer will utilize the amount for the given purpose once he has the money 
he is the owner of that and can use it for any purpose defying the government's intention for its use with digital currency government can now issue a code to the farmer via qr code or sms and it can only be used for the purpose it is intended for government can also track the use of this directly from the central bank now we know a lot about upi cbdc the way it works and what are the difference between these two let's also review the history of transactions how transactions started and what's going on and what's the future of transactions so the history of transactions started with the barter system where the goods were exchanged as a transaction later it was replaced by coins then the currency notes came into existence then the debit card where the amount can be deposited into bank account and the debit card can be swiped or the cash can be withdrawn for atm then came the credit card where you can make the transactions first and later pay back to the bank within the duration of one month then the online payments came into existence via nft and rtgs then came the upi and now the future is digital currency now let's see what the indian government has to say about e rupee
Thank you for watching the video. If you like the content, please like the video, share the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Thank you.